Hey there, I'm Dynomega, creator of the Time of Day Blueprint System. I've had a few of you ask about using my system to power the Ultra Dynamic Sky and Weather System by Everett Gunther. Today I'll show you exactly how to do that. In this video, we will create two more blueprints. The first will update the Ultra Dynamic Sky Blueprint based on our current time of day from our Time of Day Blueprint System. The second one we create will show you how to use my Time of Day Blueprint System to schedule and change the weather in Ultra Dynamic Weather. Before we continue, make sure you have your project open up and both the time of day blueprint system and the Ultra Dynamics Sky systems are in your level. For this example, we're going to use the demo level that's included with the Ultra Dynamics Sky. The UI that you see at the top left is part of my time of day system and it's being added to the viewport and the key bindings for it can be found in the player controller in the demo folder. And just to keep it simple, I went ahead and attached the game mode example, which is also in the demo folder, to the world settings for this level. And this game mode selects my example player controller for me. Let's get started. First thing you need to do is drop the time of day blueprint system into your level. For now I'm just going to leave everything as the defaults on the settings. And if we press play nothing will happen. This is because we have to build the logic that connects between both blueprints. Let's go ahead and create a new blueprint. Call it BP Time of Day UDS. Go ahead and open it up and create a new variable called Time of Day BP and set its type to BP Time of Day. Create another variable called Ultra Dynamic Sky BP and set its type to Ultra Dynamic Sky. Set both variables to instance editable by clicking on the little eye icons. Compile, save, and drop the new blueprint into your level. Then hook up the time of day BP and the Ultra Dynamic Sky actors to it. Next, go back to your blueprint and into the event graph. It's time to connect our time of day system. Drop your time of day BP variable into the event graph. And for this example, we're going to tap into the event notifier. And drag off the pin and select bind event to notify time. Now from the bind event, click and drag off the red square handle and select add custom event. Name your event anything. I'm going to call mine update UDS. Next, drag off the notify data pin and select break. Now we have a number of different options here, but let's first take a look at the UDS blueprint and see what we need to change to rotate our sky. This time of day value looks like what we are looking for. It has a range from zero to 2400. This 2400 number is all we need to know. So now let's hop back over to our new blueprint. Since we're working with day logic, let's pull off the day pin and select break again. So let's go ahead and drag off the Ultra Dynamic Sky BP variable out into our graph, drag off the percentage complete pin of our day structure and select multiply. Enter 2400 into the box. Next, we need to feed this value into the UDS blueprint. And from the pin, select set time of day under the basic category. Go ahead and connect the value from our multiply node into this value and let's see how it looks. It looks like it's working, but the one thing that stands out is that it's ticking and not smoothly transitioning the placement of the moon. And this is because our time of day system by default has a notify rate of one second. And the easiest way to adjust this is just by selecting the time of day BP actor in the world. And then from the details panel, change the notify rate from 1 to 0.1. So after adjusting our notify rate, we can see right away that it's much smoother. And we can also set up our own looped event that requests this data on demand at a set rate instead of using the event notifier. But for this example, we're just trying to keep it simple. Let's see how the night to day transition looks. Yep, that looks good. And before we call it quits with this first blueprint, make sure you go back to your event graph and clean it up. And remember this blueprint created was just the bridge between the two systems. My time of day system was created for you to drive your own time-based logic. And that is exactly what we're doing here with Everett's Ultra Dynamic Sky System. Fun doesn't stop there. Next, we're going to create a daily weather schedule using the Ultra Dynamic Weather, which is part of the Ultra Dynamic Sky system. Let's go ahead and create a new actor BP in our Dynamega Time of Day Blueprints folder. Call this one BP Time of Day UDW. Then go ahead and open it. Now create a variable called Time of Day BP and select the BP Time of Day. Create another variable called Ultra Dynamic Weather BP and select Ultra Dynamic Weather for the type. Now set both variables to instance editable using the eye icons. Compile, save, and then go back to your level and drop the new blueprint actor into it. Then from the details panel, connect it to the time of day BP and your Ultra Dynamic Weather BP actors. Now go back to the event graph for our new BP. And just like our sky rotating example, we're going to tap into the event notifier from the time system. And this is how we're going to schedule our weather. 
So go ahead and drop your time of day PP variable into the event graph. And from the pin, drag off and select bind event notify time. From the bind event node, drag from the red square handle and select add custom event. Name your event. I'm going to call mine update UDW. Then from the custom event, drag from the notify data pin and select break. Since we're dealing with hours in this example, let's pull from our time structure and break it. As you can see, we have a number of options here to work with, but let's keep it simple and just work with this hours 24, which is the current hour in 24 hour format. Drag from this pin and select switch on int. For this example, I want to start a thunderstorm right when we hit midnight, which is our default starting time for the time of day BP. So go ahead and click add pin on our switch and drag from the zero execute pin into a do once node. Now the do once node is very important as it prevents us from spamming what we're about to do next over and over every time a notify comes in, which is 10x a second at this current notify rate of 0.1. We can also reset the do once node on the next hour. So what exactly are we going to do now? Let's drop our variable for the alter dynamic weather BP into our event graph. And we don't just want to update the current weather on the UDW blueprint. That will cause it to flip like a switch without any sort of transition. UDW also provides us with a little helper function we can use called change weather. And with it, it'll let us choose our next weather pattern as well as define a number of seconds for the transition. And the default of 200 seconds will work great for our normal game speed. But for this example, we're going to be moving time at an average of 10x. So let's go ahead and change the transition to 20 instead. Go ahead and plug in in the execution pan from our do once into this node and hit play. Let's see if it works. Yep, looks like it's working. Now let's kick it up a notch and schedule a few more weather events right into our current logic. So let's say at 1 a.m. we want to start a blizzard. First, let's drop in a sequence. Then connect your one pin from our switch into it. Now duplicate the do once and connect it to the then one. Duplicate the change weather and UDWBP variable nodes. Let's select snow from our new weather type. Add another pin to our switch and connect that to the reset node of our second do once. Now you can stop right here if you want, but I'm going to go ahead and add one more stage which will clear everything up in the sky at 2 a.m. And I'm intentionally leaving the do once off here so I can show you exactly why it's important. I'm going to add a few more comments to try to show the blueprint while previewing is playing so you can see exactly what's happening in the background. So far so good, but watch as we hit 2 a.m. We see the line activate, but it's steadily hitting without our do once node. Now look at our preview. It isn't actually changing, and this is because we're actually starting over the request to change the weather over and over, which makes it never finish the transition. Keep this in mind if you get unexpected behavior, or if what you are doing is happening over and over. Chances are you do not properly throttle the event. Well, let's add in our do once and fix it up. And let's see how it looks now. I like it. With my time of day system, your time driven logic can be as simple or as complex as you need it to be. Just make sure you're properly throttling and only handling requests as needed by your game. Keep in mind, there is more than one way to approach your time logic goals. These examples are created with an emphasis on the ease of use, and it is possible to create a much more efficient driver for both. These should be good starter points. If you have any questions about my time of day blueprint system, you can ask them in the comments below. If you have any questions specifically about the Alter Dynamic Sky or Alter Dynamic Weather Systems, please direct those to the creator of this asset. And I'll leave links to both of these assets in the description of this video.